Well, good morning, church. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I want you to know that no matter where you came from this morning, no matter if this is your first time, no matter if you've not been here in a a while, no matter the things that you carry, no matter the things that make up who you are as a person, and no matter whom you love, you are welcomed here by our God who has created each of us who calls us and invites us into an ever-close relationship with God. I invite you into worship this morning. I'm so happy that each of you are here and also those of you joining us online. We know that COVID is still um, widespread and so we respect that everyone is taking care of themselves in whatever way you feel most comfortable. Here in the church, we do ask that everyone keeps their mask on at all times, unless you're eating or drinking, that is. We're so glad that you're here. I would like to draw your attention to a couple of announcements on the inside right panel of your bulletin, if you received one while you walked in. You'll see a couple announcements. The first and most important, if you look in your bulletin, there's a little connect card. And I would love for every single one of you to fill this out, put your name, and write something, write a prayer request or how might I as your pastor, as the pastor here, be in prayer for you this week. This is something that I take seriously as being a leader here, is I want to be in prayer with and for all of you. Um, And if you don't have a pen, I'm sure we have some in the back. Um, And I just really hope that you would take that seriously. We do look at these. um, And also put your contact information. If you would like to be in contact with me, I will definitely reach out to you if you'll provide that on that Connect card. Um, And then you can place this in the offering plate when it goes around later. A couple other announcements. We also have a few small groups during the week. They are on Tuesday nights, and so if you're interested, they are all on Zoom. Um, And so if you are traveling a lot, no worries. Uh, We have a lot of people that travel a lot, but they can still participate in our Bible studies. Um, Another announcement. Carolyn, do you have your book with you? For those of you who are with us each week, you know that we are in a series called The Bible Year. Um, And so I have a couple of these books upstairs. If anyone would like to purchase them, they are $10 a piece. Um, And so this is a devotion book that goes through the Bible in the whole year. Um, And so this is what we're following through our sermon series as well. Um, And so we're digging really deep into our scripture, into the history of our faith. Um, And so you'll be hearing a lot of that as the weeks progress throughout this year. I invite you to pick up a copy. Um, You can also find it online, on Amazon. Wherever you get your books, um, it is available. Last but not least, uh, we support First United Methodist Church. They support us. Um, And one of the beautiful things that I think we as a community can do is to be in service to our neighbors, to be in service to our community. We all know that people struggle, right? There are people in deep need, and the Breakfast Club is a ministry of First United Methodist Church that I was in charge of uh, before I came here. Um, and it's just a beautiful ministry that provides showers and meals, clothing to people three days a week. Um, and so each month, we're focusing on things that we can collect for that ministry. For the month of January, we are collecting t-shirts, uh, which are given out every day that they are open. Um, And so in your bulletin, there's a little QR code, um, or if you're watching online, there is a link um, as well, and your weekly emails, um, and we can post that as well, um, that will take you to an Amazon wish list. And there is a lot of items on that wish list, um, more than just shirts. Um, So feel free to purchase whatever, and it will be sent to the address of the person who's now running that ministry. Um, So just a very easy way for you to participate and to volunteer. Um, and help, even if you don't have the time to physically go and be present at the Breakfast Club, this is an easy way for us to be in service to the community. Those are all the announcements I have this morning. And as we prepare to enter into this time of worship, I invite you into a moment of silence as we prepare to meet the presence of God in this place. Let us center ourselves in a moment of silence.
Lord, come, breathe your life and breath upon us. Give us strength and give us hope. Amen. I now invite you to stand as you're able as we join in our call to worship. You'll find the lyrics on the screen or in your bulletin. God of ages past, help us put our trust in you. You who liberates people from suffering and oppression, help us put our trust in you. You who makes a way through the wilderness, help us put our trust in you. You who turns our mourning into dancing, help us put our trust in you. Today, as we juggle the weight of reality, help, help us put, put our trust in you. you. Amen. Now let us affirm as a body of Christ who we are as a community here at St. John's. St. John's on the Lake is a reconciling congregation that affirms the sacred worth of all people. All are welcome to fully participate in the life of our church and ministries, each of us as we grow with God and in our faith. Whatever your race, ethnicity, economic situation, gender or sexual orientation, background or God-given abilities, you are welcome here. God calls us to acts of love, grace, and advocacy, together here and out in the world. We hope to be a sanctuary and a place without barriers for all of God's creation. Amen. Let us continue standing as we join in our opening hymn, There is a Spirit of Love in This Place. You all may be seated. At this time in our service each week, we come to a time of prayer where we center and lift up the prayers and concerns of our own hearts, of those close to us. And so this morning, might we join as a family and share our joys and concerns with one another. Are there any things that you would like to lift up this day? Caroline's stepdaughter is going through um, treatment, and so she starts today. And so we pray for her as she enters into um, this alcohol recovery program. And who is this again? Your nephew who's battling cancer. Mm. For sure, we're definitely praying for them. 
And we'll continue praying for Lori and her whole family. Um, Lori is not with us today because she's with her sister, I believe, um, who is also battling cancer. Um, and so we pray for her, her sister, Sally, um, and for their whole family. Also, one of our beloved church members, Bill, um, who's continuing to recover from a lung transplant that he had a couple months ago. Um, I think he's doing much better, but um, we continue to pray for his recovery as well. Um, as you may notice, there are some flowers here on the altar. Um, and that they're from a funeral that we held yesterday in this space. Um, a member of the community, not here at St. John's, but who lives here in Miami Beach, was 43 years old and who passed away from a heart attack. Um, his partner came and found him. Um, and so I'm so thankful for Jenny and for Leah and for Oriana who are here yesterday with us to um, be a part of that service. Um, I just, I would ask for prayers for his partner, Galdino. Um, I think Jenny and Leah would affirm that this room was really heavy yesterday. Um, it was a sudden loss, um, and there was not a dry eye in the room. Um, so prayers for their whole family, um, all the friends and everybody who knew them and was going through a hard time. The gentleman's name was Frederick Summer, um, and his partner, Galdino Neto, is the one who has survived and um, continues to live in this moment of loss. I also give God thanks for our guest singers today, Cynthia and Clayton, is that correct? Um, we're so thankful for them. Um, this is audition season, so some of our singers have been out and rotating, and um, we're just so thankful for Jenny and for your gifts and for being able to provide such beautiful music for us week in and week out. So I give God thanks. I think you're in for a treat today. Um, again, I, I've said this a couple times, if you ever have a chance to come early before church and listen to them practice, it is such a moving experience. It is so beautiful. Um, and just, I'm so grateful to be a part of this church and have our music team. I would also ask prayers for myself um, a week from tomorrow um, is a big day in my life. <laughs> Um, I'm going before uh, the Board of Ordained Ministry in the United Methodist Church. Um, for those of you who do not know, that is the head honcho committee of who gets to be ordained and who gets to be commissioned. Um, and so I have made it through a bunch of hoops to get to this point. Um, there's still more hoops after this, but this is a pretty big one. Um, and so this interview will be to determine whether or not I will be commissioned as a provisional elder come this summer. Um, and so I would ask for your prayers. Um, I have a lot of nerves and anxiety going into that interview. Um, there, are, there will be a lot of firsts happening if I do get past this committee. It will be a big, joyous moment. Um, but I, I just ask for your prayers um, as I prepare over the next week. Any other prayers? I'm sure we each have concerns and joys in our hearts, and let us center those. Let us hold them, let us lift them to God, who knows our every need and who is with us now. Let us center in this moment of prayer. Great God, we come to you this morning, hearts full of emotions of many types. 
But Lord, regardless what those emotions are, we know that you are here with us. And Lord, we give to you ourselves. Everything that we hold within us and everything we, that concerns us from outside of us. Lord, we know that your strength is beyond our imagination. Your comfort is beyond our understanding. And your peace is beyond our comprehension. Lord, today we come and we bow before you and ask that your spirit would meet us here, that it would offer us the things that we need. Lord, you know where we are. You know how heavy things can be. You know the joys within us. And you commit to be with us through it all. Lord, we lift up to you the names and the situations named today those who are battling illness of many kinds, those who are going through struggles and addictions, those who are undergoing treatments, those battling hardships of so many types. We place them in your hands and trust them in your care. Lord, we trust ourselves within your presence. Today we ask for your comfort to be among us so that we might be your comfort to those around us. Lord, give us faith to continue pressing on when things are difficult, that we might have the strength of your love and that love might radiate in the world around us. Lord, help us to be your hands and feet, your disciples, as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning to all of you. It's so nice to look out and see so wonderful, beautiful, smiling eyes and weekly happiness out there. Um, today's scripture is from the Old Testament, from the book of Exodus, chapter 14, 1 through 30. Get ready. This is story time. We are going to hear the story of the Israelites crossing the Red Sea. Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell the Israelites to turn back and camp in front of Pihahirath between Migdol and the sea, in front of Baal Zephon. You shall camp opposite by the sea. Pharaoh will say of the Israelites, they are wandering aimlessly in the land. The wilderness has closed in on them. I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and he will pursue them, so that I will gain glory for myself over Pharaoh and all his army. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord. And they did so. When the king of Egypt was told that the people had fled, the minds of Pharaoh and his officials were changed towards the people, and they said, What have we done letting Israel leave our service? So he had his chariot made ready and took his army with him. He took 600 
picked chariots and all the other chariots of Egypt with officers over all of them. The Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued the Israelites who were going out boldly. The Egyptians pursued them, all Pharaoh's horses and chariots, his chariot drivers and his army. They overtook them camped by the sea, by Pahirath in front of Baal Zephon. As Pharaoh drew near, the Israelites looked back, and there were the Egyptians advancing on them. In great fear, the Israelites cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Was it because there was no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us, bringing us out of Egypt? Is this not the very thing we told you in Egypt? Let us alone and let us serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. But Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm and see the deliverance that the Lord will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you and have only to keep still. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. But you lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the Israelites may go into the sea on dry land. Then I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And so I will gain glory for myself over Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and his chariot drivers. And the Egyptians shall know that I and the Lord when I have gained glory for myself over Pharaoh, his chariots, and his chariot drivers. The angel of God, who was going before the Israelites' army, moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with the darkness, and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry land, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord and the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, Let us flee from the Israelites, for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And at dawn, the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots 
and the chariot drivers, the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea. Not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, and the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus, the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's give Carol Ann a round of applause for reading that long story. <laughs> Thank you, Carol Ann. I know it's a long text, but it's a really rich story, um, a really crucial story in our faith. So would you all bow and pray with me? Lord, we ask that your spirit may come and speak to us today. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen. I'm wondering how many of you have ever been knocked down? Knocked down physically before? All of us, right? We're humans. We've been knocked down, especially as children. Now, if you've been knocked down, how many of you have gotten back up after you've knocked down? You're all here today, so I affirm that you've all gotten back up, okay? <laughs> Now, have you ever been knocked down, gotten back up, and then been knocked right back down before? Few of us, less of us. It's not a really good feeling, right? It's like, man, I can't catch a break. I just fell and I'm trying to get back up. So when I was a kid, I can remember my dad would play some jokes on me. My dad takes after my grandfather, who was a king of jokes and poking fun at people. So my dad always finds someone in the room to poke fun at, right? Still to this day, he loves picking on people. And as a kid, I was an easy target. <laughs> I was a little kid with a high-pitched voice. I was weak. You know, I was very ticklish, and I loved attention. So all those things together made me a very easy target. So what my dad would do, he would corner me, and he would start tickling me. Anyone in here the ticklish? A few of us? My dad would start tickling me so much that I would fall onto the ground, and then he would torture me, tickling me where I couldn't get up, right? I'm laughing so hard, I'm just flat on the floor. And then he finally, I'm like, I can't breathe. So he then like holds off for a second, lets me catch a breath. I stand up. And what does he do? He starts at it again. I fall back down. And then I, it gets to the point I'm in tears because I'm laughing so hard, but I'm also out of breath, right? This would go on four to five times. My dad was cruel to me. But I loved the attention so much, I always went back for more, <laughs> right? But there were times that when you would get back up after having just fallen down, it felt defeating. It felt exhausting. There were times that I felt helpless because I was a little kid, and my dad is my size, right? So looking up at my dad as a little kid, and you know, it feels helpless. There's no way I can escape this situation. Now, on a more serious note, maybe we recently haven't been physically knocked down, but I can almost guarantee you that every single one of us has felt the emotional blows of life, of being knocked down, right? It's difficult. It's like we go through one hardship and we're just getting through it when we turn around and we're slapped in the face with another, right? That's what it feels like so often. 
And we just keep going through cycles of one hardship, and we get back up, and then we fall back down with something else. It goes and goes and goes. And before we know it, we're out of breath. We feel overwhelmed. We feel confused. We feel the exhaustion weighing upon us each time we fall down. The emotional roller coaster of getting up, and falling back down, getting up, falling back down, can leave us feeling lost and confused can distort our own perception of reality. Because at some point, we forget what normal even is. We don't know what normal is without hardship. We don't know what used to be because it's been so long since we've been there. This morning, we heard a very lengthy story from the book of Exodus describing just a portion of the Israelites' journey from slavery in Egypt on their way to the Promised Land, right? They've been freed from slavery, and just when they think they're on the way to something good, now they're on the run. For their lives. Because when the Egyptians heard that they had left, Pharaoh didn't believe that they would actually leave. He sent the army after them to chase them. So just when the Israelites think they're free, now they're actually running for their lives. This is when the Israelites begin to complain saying that, can't we just go back to Egypt, where there are not enough graves? We would rather be there, because it seems like we're just going to die. The Israelites prefer slavery in Egypt to the risk of freedom here in the wilderness. That freedom that they longed for so long ago seemed so much better before they actually were taking steps toward it, right? But now, now that they're on the path to freedom in the wilderness, they would rather suffer the things that they know, the things that they've been through before. Well, I can do this. I've been there before. They don't want to face something that they've never faced. Freedom itself becomes a very confusing concept to the Israelites. Their perceptions are changed. Corey Driver is a professor of the Old Testament in Cairo, Egypt, and he explains their confusion, he he explains Israel's confusion in this way, and also in a brief synopsis of the story that Carol Ann just read for us. The Israelites were freed with gifts of gold and silver, and then they were pursued by an army, and then Moses told them, be still and see what God can do. And then God told them to stop standing still and just move forward. And then the pillar that had been leading them from in front then moved behind them. And then they walked through the depths of a sea, but on dry land. And then the army continued to pursue them. And then the army drowned. What kind of freedom is this. The freedom that God promised seems a bit odd, right? They had one understanding of freedom when they were in slavery in Egypt, but now that they're on the road to freedom, it seems a bit different than they had imagined. 
this is not easy. This path to freedom doesn't seem clear-cut, doesn't seem straightforward. And it's not just exhausting, but it's kind of frightening, right? It's overwhelming. Things aren't what they once were. Because we know what we've been through, and we can survive that, but this is something we've never been through. And then God's telling us there's more that we have to go through. Let's go back to Egypt. They can't experience the fullness of the freedom that they had imagined. But one of my favorite parts of this whole story is when the Israelites begin complaining. God comes to Moses. This is in verse 15, if you want to go back and look. And God says to Moses, why do you cry out to me? Tell the Israelites to move forward. Now, I don't know about you, but after you've been knocked down and get back up, knocked down and get back up, what do you want to do? You just want to rest, right? You want to breathe. Like, after my dad has just been torturing me, all I want to do is just take a breath, right? But here, God says, keep moving forward. Have faith. I think sometimes we do have to do our best to keep going one foot after the other, to keep going. We have to lean upon the strength around us, the people that we love, the people that are with us in this wilderness. Because God is indeed bringing something through what we are currently experiencing. There is freedom beyond our comprehension that is yet to come. The Israelites' journey wasn't straightforward or easy. But lucky for us, we know where that journey ended up, right? They made it to the promised land, right? But it wasn't how they expected to get there. There were some twists and turns, there were hardships, there were obstacles, and there were things that they had to do to get there. They had to cooperate and to partner with God in order to get to the promised land. To paraphrase the work of Nelson Mandela, many of you might know, the long walk to freedom is frequently difficult and almost always confusing. Freedom can sound so appealing, but the way there can be quite jolting. When we realize how much work it takes to experience freedom, it can be overwhelming. Yes, there will be times when we are unsure if this is worth it. There will be times we look back at Egypt and say, wasn't it better back then? Isn't this worse than what we've already been through? There will be times when we feel as if I cannot push on anymore. We're going to die right here. Today, I'm reminded of the perseverance of so many people throughout history who have fought for freedom. Just this past week, we celebrated Martin Luther King Jr. Day, someone who is the epitome of fighting in perseverance who was knocked down time and time and time and time again, who continued to get back up, who continued to believe in what God was doing in this world, to fight for freedom, not just for himself, but for all people of color. Think about the people who fought alongside him, the many times they fell down and got back up. 
And I also think about someone like Nelson Mandela who did very similar work in the country of South Africa, who was knocked down and got back up. People like them teach us that freedom is always worth it. Even in the wilderness, even when, when circumstances seem so overwhelming, we cannot bear them. Freedom is worth it. It doesn't matter how hard it is, because this is what God has called us to. This is what God is not calling us to, but also leading us to, to freedom. Yes, it will be difficult, and there will be times when the breath is knocked out of us. But friends, we have to keep our eyes on the prize. We have to stay focused on where we are going. We are headed to the promised land. God is leading us to a place full of abundant life, love, and freedom. This journey can be confusing, but we have to have faith enough to know that God is leading us along the way. But if there's something that the Israelites teach us, it's that this journey through the wilderness also requires a balance. There is a constant dance with God between letting God lead and fight for us and also when God says to move forward and you need to do some work. There's a constant dance between finding that balance. Sometimes we must wait and witness what God is doing and be in awe. And there are other times when we are the ones called to do the work. When we are required to do something to bring about freedom. In this story, a huge symbolism is the reference of the sea. Sea represents chaos in Scripture. And in the story, we see that God has power over the chaos. The power of Moses' staff reminds us that God is so much bigger than our circumstances. God is so much bigger than the things of the world. Regardless of how chaotic and scary things might be, we must know that God is here with us. God is helping us get back up. God is giving us the breath, the strength to keep going. God is bringing about life and freedom into this world. Today, I also think about this ongoing pandemic, how daunting it has been, how exhausting it has been. And it feels like as soon as we get a glimpse of hope, we have vaccines. What happens? Delta came about, Omicron came about, and we're knocked right back down. And it feels like we're just back two years ago. It's confusing. But make no mistake. God is with us. God is here. And I believe that God is working in our midst even when we cannot comprehend it. Even when we can't see it. Even when we wish we could go back to pre-pandemic life, right? It, was it wasn't perfect, but it's better than what we're having now, right? Even then, we must remember that wherever God is leading us is so much more beautiful than anywhere we've ever been. Whatever is ahead of us 
is something that none of us can even fathom. It will be beautiful. And it will be worth this journey, I promise. Despite how confused, how exhausted we might be, sometimes our best faithfulness is to stop standing still, to stop crying out, and to trust that God is leading our steps. And God is inviting us forward. Whatever you are going through today, I pray that you have the faith enough to keep pressing on, trusting that freedom is on its way. Because, friends, it takes faith to experience freedom. So let us dance together in faith trusting that our God is for us and that our God is also calling us to join the work of freedom. Amen. this time, Carol Ann's going to be coming around to receive our tithes and offerings, and I remind you to put your Connect cards in the plate. Um, also, if you're joining us online, there's a way you can give online. If, there, if you're on the website, there's an online giving tab. You can go and make a gift. Trust that this is a part of God's work in the world, that we are going to fight for freedom and inclusion and everything that God has promised to us. Let us join God in this work. of a beautiful sun Someday when the world is much brighter
Amen, amen. Well, let us stand and give God thanks for these gifts as we sing our doxology together. Let us continue standing as we join in our closing hymn, My Life Flows On, remembering that whatever journey that we are on, God is going to continue to lead us forward. Let us sing together. Thank you, team. Thank you all for being here today. I don't know what the road ahead looks like. I don't know what your individual paths look like. But one thing that I know is that God has promised a land of abundance, an abundance of life, love, and freedom for all people. And I know that the, wor the journey on the way to that freedom, to the land of abundance, will be worth it. So I pray today that each of you might have the faith to keep on singing, to keep on dancing, to put one foot in front of the other, trusting that God is with us. Go in the joy and the peace of God, our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.